Hey guys, I'm Lizzie Arbigas alongside Scott Hardy and it's a little early but we're ready to talk some football. Uh, so we're doing a couple series over the course of this summer and we're going to kick it off uh, with our Games to Watch series like we did last year. Yeah, what are you talking about? It's never too early to talk about football in the state of Alabama, but uh, <laughs> we finally gotten through with all the spring practices and everybody's gearing up for summer workouts and conditioning and getting ready to start implementing some things that they will uh, hopefully be ready for in the fall. But I uh, was starting off with one of my favorites, or probably my favorite. <laughs> one of. <laughs> probably my favorite, the Benson Wilson Wildcats. And we're here at the uh, Bar Charles E. Bailey Sportplex, and finally we got some decent weather uh, here today so we figured we'd come outside and let's talk uh, about their fr their top three games to watch this year for the Wildcats and we're going to start it off early uh, with your favorite week zero. Um, they're going to host the Beauregard Hornets um, in, in week zero to open. It's a home game and we picked this game because it's obviously our first look at Coach Kevin Smith. Yeah and I think that's obviously something that we're all excited for not even just Benjamin Russell fans, but people across the state, they understand what a high profile hire this was, not necessarily Coach Smith, but the job itself. And right. So now him walking into uh, this position is something that he's been looking forward to for some time, and, or for some time rather, we've talked about it, served as an assistant for 22 years uh, for the Wildcats, uh, nine as, a, as a, a coordinator for the previous coach, Coach Danny Horn. But now it's the, the Kevin Smith show, and so yeah. something that you hit on. The thing that I'm interested to see the most is the comparison in and offensive philosophy. Right, and I think that, um, you know, this is obviously a game that they want to win. It, not only is this the fir first game of the year, want to get off on that good start, but it's Beauregard. They've never beaten them, um, and I think they have a, a decent chance this year being that Beauregard's uh, lost some of their, their top players. Um, but I do think it'll be that first opportunity uh, for Wildcat fans to see just what this offense is going to look like. And, and I don't think he's going to change too much. I just think that maybe we'll see, especially with we've got Landon Cotney, a third-year quarterback at this point, um, we'll be able to put a little bit more on his shoulders in terms of uh, putting the ball in the air. Yeah, and, and that's really what I want to see. Last year was his – he took over his sophomore year, middle ways through the season, taking over for Timmy Lawson completely – finished right. the year last year as a starter from game one to, to yeah. game in. And so now this will be, I mean, why this is his third year, but now I really want to see the progression of Landon. And uh, I was talking to some of the guys, I actually ran into Landon uh, on the late during Memorial Day, and I was asking them how I'd heard he ran a 4 5 40, and apparently that was the, the fastest time on wow. the team. So that'll be something that uh, we'll want to well, see. Well, we if saw that's him use his feet quite yeah, a bit he's, last he's, year. I hate to use the term, he's not deceptively fast. He's really fast, actually. Uh, <laughs> he's just fast. Yeah, he's just fast. But but um, I think he has, in comparison to some guys like Isaiah Stowe, he doesn't have the same game speed that maybe they do, but right. uh, just in terms of being able to run that option uh, that they like to run from time to time. But uh, something that I was shocked with, but uh, it's obviously true, but the Borgard owns a 4-0 lead yes. uh, against the Wildcats winning in 2010, 11, and consecutively in 16 and 17. But those previous two years were with, as you said, Lenanian Webb, somebody who is now leaving and going on to play at Mississippi State. So uh, should be a, a lot easier uh, feat, I think, at least in terms of stopping uh, their offense. Yeah, absolutely. And um, our second game to watch, just as exciting as seeing Kevin Smith, I think we'll be seeing Danny Horn. Uh, the Wildcats head to Clay Central, where Danny Horn has gone back to his, his homeland, as they say. Um, and I think um, that's obviously, you know, this game doesn't necessarily mean a lot in terms of region and standings and all those kinds of things, but just uh, what is that going to be like for the Wildcats to um, to face Danny? And and also, you know, these seniors, there's a lot of, a lot of teams when they have coaching switches, they've been through it. These seniors have never been through a coaching switch, um, have never had to face their old coach before. So I think it'll just be a really, really good environment. Um, and it's close by, it is away, but only, you know, about 45 minutes to play Central. Yeah, uh, the, the final game of, of the three that we'll hit on is one that I always look forward to. It's my favorite game of the year. But uh, I think that it, it's changed a little bit for this year. <laughs> I think this, this Clay Central game will definitely be one that both communities will be looking forward to. Obviously, Coach Horn spent nine seasons here, successful seasons at that, never was able to get over the hump in terms of a state championship, but did win four consecutive 10-win seasons there and uh, a couple of region championships, but uh, goes on the flip side. So this isn't 
the, the maybe your grandfather's or your father's uh, Clay County team. Right. This is Clay Central where Benjamin Russell does hold a 3-1 lead against them. But it will be interesting to see kind of the mentor-mentee uh, relationship. That's part of the, the storyline of that game as well. But uh, something that I'll be interested to see is how Clay Central is able to replace. We're, we're playing a lot of teams that have had some turnover, Benjamin right. Russell included. Uh, with, with the loss of Cameron Peoples and Ben Street, both in the, the running back and quarterback position, there respectively. So it'll be interesting to see how, how Coach Horn is uh, viewed from the opposing sidelines from the Alex City community. And I also think it'll be interesting to see how, how Horn handles this game. I know that he um, you know, was very emotional when he left. I, I talked to him about the when the instant replay um, happened and uh, you know, he, he said we a couple of times as if he was still a wildcat, you know, so I think it, you know, for him, he's, he hasn't been in this position in a long time of facing his old team. And um, I just think it'll be a, a really good environment all around. And it's Danny Horn, it's going to be their season opener, the volunteer mm -hmm. season opener. So that's Clay, you know, Horn's first chance at Clay Central to kind of, to kind of prove himself. How ironic is that? that that's, <laughs> that's awesome there that that, that that has been presented to him. But in the, the day, it's still Coach Horn, and obviously he'll be on the other on the other sideline. But I think that what he was able to do in this community, I think everyone here appreciates that, and I think that you'll see a group of people who, you know, will respect that. And the game's on the road too, so it'll be the Wildcats' second game of the season, but their first game on the road. But the pressure's off, as you said, at least not in terms of being able to not have to worry about you know a region matchup or anything like that. Right, absolutely. Um, and our third game to watch for Benjamin Russell, we debated about this one a little bit. I wanted to go with Wetumpka, being that they went to the state championship last year, uh, how, how you know, important that game was for both teams last year. Uh, but we settled on Opelika. Big rivalry game, always a game to watch every year. Yeah, and I think there's even more spotlight on this matchup in particular because the Wildcats, some may say, stole a game last year. Right. But um, truthfully, as you, you alluded to in your, your column, or in your story rather, they were up 19 to nothing and gave up two scores at the end of the game that makes yeah. it look a little closer than what the game actually was. The last six minutes, four and a half minutes rather, uh, during that game, Opelika makes a run there. But uh, probably one of the more dominating defensive performances we've seen in that game in, in a couple of decades. Uh, but both have new coaching hires mm -hmm. there. Um, so you'll see a little, I think, some more, some anxiousness there, but between the co coaches because they understand the importance of the rivalry between the two communities, and it's a region game as well. I think it'll be the third region game for the Wildcats um, during that time. Yeah, and one thing about this region, which which we didn't talk about too much in the written article, was was that the region is so small. I mean, it's only a 16 region, so every region game could be a yeah. game to watch. I mean, it's you know there's there's very little room for error, but there also is uh, more reward. I mean, four of the six are going to make it. Um, you know, look at, you know, a seven or eight team region and obviously less teams, more teams don't make it to the playoffs. But I think that, you know, there's there's not a lot of wiggle room um, in the region and it's a tough one. Um, and so this Opelika game could be, you know, kind of, kind of tell us, it's right at that point of the season where it could kind of tell us, okay, are the Wildcats going to get to the playoffs again or are they not? Yeah, and, you know, we're talking about Landon Cotton. By this point in the season and offensively as well, I think you'll, the identity of this team will, will be cemented by that point, and so you kind of know what you have. Uh, again, this would have been the third region game. I think it'll be Calera and maybe Demopolis would have been the two teams beforehand. So Sand both Hill. of those are two teams that were not in the area last year. As the Wildcats had those two teams as well as Stanhope Elmore, and I'm sure I'm missing. So that was it. So it'd be That's Benjamin yeah. Russell and we talk about. So uh, some unfamiliarity there in terms of that, but when you talk about two teams knowing each other, two communities, just the Wildcats and, and the Bulldogs. And, and again, Benjamin Russell is down in the series 37, 32, and 3. Oh, but, that's close. But the last 20 years, it's like 15 and 5 of like it. So it's really been dominated by, by the Bulldogs. So uh, new streak, hopefully been able to get started as, as the Wildcats have traveled to Opelika. But uh, Coach Speakman, again, someone who uh, is familiar with the rivalry. He and Coach Smith both very familiar with each other. So it should be very interesting to see that matchup, especially with, the, as you said, the ramifications of a, a win or a loss right. uh, could definitely impact some things from the playoff side. And also important to know, it's Benjamin Russell's final home game of the year. They're mm -hmm. on the road for their last three games of the season. Um, so it'll be kind of the last hurrah at home for the community. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to pull out what they did last year. Definitely. So that's uh, kind of a... 
your top three games top there three for games. for the Wildcats. And so, as you said, this will be something that we do uh, throughout the summer, and we'll be recapping or really previewing, rather, uh, all of the teams in our coverage area. Yep, and next week we'll be taking a look at the Dadeville Tigers, so stick with us for that, and we'll see you guys next week.